All right, this is a, another Raspberry Pi demo. This little board here is the MCP4725. It is a 12-bit digital to analog converter, and I'm writing a value to it from 0 to 4095, adding 100 to it in a loop, and you will see the voltage output. It will go up to a certain value, 4 volts and something, before it goes back to zero. This is a 12-bit device. It's fairly accurate. Uh, there it goes back to zero to start the count all over again. In the main page, I'll explain how this is programmed um, using I2C. It's an inexpensive device and very accurate. Anyway, let's move on to the coding explanation. Here's a blow-up of the MCP4725 breakout board and the chip itself, which is quite small. You have some pull-up resistors. And you notice you have a small trace here called address. Unsoldering this gob of solder here and jumpering it to VCC or whatever changes the address of the device on the I2C line. The only other connections you got, you have the voltage out, you have a ground, your serial clock, serial data, VCC. I ran mine at 5 volts and ground. All right, be aware with these pull-up resistors, if you flip the board over, you can cut some traces on the back to remove these if you're connecting to a Raspberry Pi. I didn't bother doing that because I used a level translator, Raspberry Pi's, GPIO runs at 3 volts. I was operating this at 5 volts, so I used a level translator. You can run this at 3 volts, and you might want to go ahead and cut those traces on the back of the board. I didn't bother doing that. Let's look at our block diagram of the MCP4725 and note some of the features we have. We have the typical I2C interface logic, some input registers, and a DAC register. And we have a resistive string. It's just a string of resistors who are that are switched in and out depending on the binary value in the DAC register, which is 12 bits D0 through D11. As an additional feature, this can be programmed when you write a value to the DAC register. You can set a bit in there to also store that value in an internal EEPROM, which has, of course, we have our power on reset and our charge pump, so we don't need a separate voltage anywhere to program the EEPROM. What this is useful for is when you first turn the system on, the output voltage is going, the DAC register will be loaded from the EEPROM and the output voltage on boot up will correspond to that binary code. And of course we have power control. So this tells us two features. When we write a 12-bit value through the I2C to the input register, which will store this in a DAC register, it will uh, directly translate to an output voltage, or if we set a particular bit, it will also write it to EEPROM. The EEPROM will take longer to program than just straight writing the DAC register. So you might want to set the EEPROM to a particular boot up value, but most of the time, if you're going to do continuous writes to the DAC register, you don't want to do it to the EEPROM because it will shorten the life of the EEPROM to try to write to it thousands of times a second. Before we look at the main program, let's discuss some other issues. This is a 12-bit DAC that's labeled from D0 to D11. 12 bits, or 2 to the 12th power, is 4096. So the reality is my values for the 12-bit um, variable is 0 to 4,095. 
If I was to stay, store, say, 2048 in the DAC register or and the EEPROM register, on power up, the output will be half VCC. So if you're running at 5 volts, when you power this up, it's going to be 2.5 volts. If you're running it at 3, it's going to come up at 1.5 or wherever you so that can be anywhere from 0 to VCC depending on the 12-bit value you store in the EEPROM. In the example I'm using here I'm just going to write to the DAC only due to the, again to the delay problem I could write a lot faster if I wanted to without writing to the EEPROM every time. If you look at the bits Okay, bits 4 through 3 are unused, while bits 2.1, let's look down at the program, and you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about from here on. Remember, we're dealing with a real C program using the Raspberry Pi. I'm not using wiring Pi or anything that's particular to the hobby stuff. This is a real C program that will access a device. Of course, like all C programs, I have to uh, include these various .h files at the beginning. All right, moving on down. I'll need an integer device for file descriptor. I've set this variable here to 0x62. That's where it is in the I2C address area, and these specialized um, variables along with a float value. First thing of course we have to open a path to the device in this case I2C-1 and set it up for read and write. If there is an error or something goes wrong we'll get an error message could an open device program immediately exit. Assuming that goes off without a hitch, we come to this. This is I.O. control. Again, we're going to set this up as an I2C slave using the MCP4725 address. Anything goes wrong, we're going to get an error. Couldn't find device on the address. Maybe you didn't hook it up. Maybe you got the data and clock lines reversed. Who knows? But if that happens, go check your I2C connections. Let's discuss the bytes that I'm the three bytes that I have to write to um, the device to get it to work. Remember, this is a 12-bit device that uses values from 0 to 4095. The first byte we're going to write is essentially the control byte. Not a whole lot here per se. Um, the most important is the first three bits. This corresponds to bits 7 through 5. Remember, this is in binary. That's bit 7. That's bit 0. For bits 7 through 5, a code is 010. It writes only to the DAC. Only. A 011 in that code would write to the DAC and the EEPROM. I've set this up to use um, DAC only. Bits 4 through 3 are unused. That's here. Uh, bits 2 through 1 sets up a particular power down sequence. You can read about that in the uh, page 19 of the spec sheet. I set that to 0. Bit 0 is unused. Now, the next byte we have to have, remember I had bits D11 through D0. I have to have the eight, I have to have the eight most significant bytes being D11 through D4 would have to be stored here. I initialize this as 0 and I list it what the bits are used for. Right buffer 2 is going to have the four least significant bits out of the 12. And that's going to be at bits 
7 through 4, that's here through here. The last four down here are not used. Moving on down. We will create a 15 character buffer. That's 15 bytes. You will be asked to enter a number from 0 to 4095. This will, load, uh, this will load that value, which at this time is a string, into the character buffer. We have to convert this to an integer value, so we use the function a to i buffer, which will return the integer value is an integer from the string you entered. And just to tell you what you entered, it will, it will print a message you entered whatever the, you entered was. Uh, you enter 2048, it'll say you entered 2048. Next, for write buffer 1, which again tains, contains your most significant bits, 11 through 4, I'm going to have to take that integer value and shift it 4 places right. And that's going to be stored in write buffer 1. And and I just had it print out a message, whatever it was, that was stored in the write buffer 1, if you want to see it printed out. You don't need that particular statement. Write buffer 2 is going to be different, though. I'm going to be shifting val four places left, so that least significant bins 3 per 0, or 3 through 0, that's the ones I didn't get that was shifted out up here, are now going to be in bits... Uh, D7 through D4. And that's going to be stored in the buffer at 2. Gives you a little message what this was. I am going to write all three bytes down here with this command. Write file descriptor. This happened to be a 4, by the way. When you, If you printed it out, I'm going to write three bytes of that buffer. It will return a number 3 which tells you, yes, we wrote three bytes. If it's anything else, then it's an error. And it will tell you right to register one or whatever error message you want, then it will exit. So what you should see on the output where I had the little digital meter that you saw, if it was 2048, right now it would be reading 2.5 at 5 volts. You can try this as many times as you want. If you want to move on down a bit. If you can see this, this is where I put that last part into a loop where I kept adding 100 to the at value of val and kept writing it. And you can see the value in buffer 1 and the value in buffer 2. And you can see a pattern emerging. If you particularly if you look over here. But by putting it in a loop, right, adding 100 to it every time, uh, we could blow that up a bit, I suppose. Um, you can see where I'm adding 100. The values keep increasing. The voltage keeps increasing in steps, as you saw. That's all there is to it. So this is an introduction as to how to program this device it's easy, it really is easy to program, and I didn't use other people's libraries to figure it out, or they don't tell you anything anyway, and this can be easily programmed from Arduino as well. So I hope you got some use out of this program uh, video. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.